I didn't expect that you would arrive with uh, such a big groupies. <laughs> <laughs> I was very lucky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you ask that specially for Luxembourg, or is it normal way that you make your entrance? Uh, well, for Luxembourg, it, this was a wonderful way to make an entrance, so <laughs> very special. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So you got a special treatment. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> First time in Luxembourg, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, and what's your very first impression about Luxembourg? Well, it's a shame the weather was so bad. <laughs> I bought it from yeah. Denmark. But, you know, going to the city yesterday, it was beautiful. So um, we have to come again and really enjoy what well, you have to offer here. Of course, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you are a trained dancer yep. first, mm -hmm. and you were playing a couple of times, two or three times mm -hmm. in, in Cats. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that experience. Okay. <laughs> so, so as a... Really, as a professional dancer in Cats, how was the feeling, especially that you did it three times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, originally, I, it was 90, I think it was 1981 that we did the original show of Cats, and um, they had cast the whole show, and um, they hadn't cast the twins, and I went for a late audition, and I wasn't going to go up for it because I felt it was very... Um, we weren't really confident about a show on T.S. Eliot's poems and, and dancing as pussycats. I thought, no, hang on a second, I'm a trained dancer and I, this won't represent me in the right way. Um, and so we were completely wrong. We hadn't finished uh, the, big, the, the end of the show and we were in previews. And uh, the first night when the audience stood up for five minutes for a standing ovation and the director, Trevor Nunn, said, we have a, a, a hit on our hands. So, and they all asked us if we wanted to put our money in shares and we all went, no, 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 it's not gonna run, it's not gonna run, and we were wrong. Oh. So many years later, we, it's still running. So that, it was an honor to be in the original cast. And then um, I understudied a part, which was a really lovely part to do, and I was asked to do it again after my, f my year's contract original contract and I said no and then it came up again and and they said we'd love you to do the part and I said that would be great and I wanted to um, buy my own house and just get the experience of doing it then and then again it came up when in Australia and the part that I did yeah. uh, the girl had gone into Les Miserables another show and um, they said we really would like Femi to come and do an exchange with one of the Australian cast members to England. So I went over to Australia and did it again for, for a year. But I really wanted to go to Australia. So the three times the reasons behind um, I did the show. Because it's a yeah. very taxing show as well. Yeah, but something happened during your performance of Cats in 1982. You were called for an audition. Oh, right. <laughs> well, what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something very special oh, and yeah. a very <laughs> strange invitation uh, for the for this special audition because they ask you to come in your swimsuit. Yeah. And uh, what was your reaction at that moment? Hey, come on, an audition and being there in a swimsuit. <laughs> I was quite offended, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I, uh, I got that my agent. We have an, I have. I had an agent back then, and they said to me, um, "There's a film being cast, and we can't really say much about it. Um, but one thing you have to do is go in your swimwear." And I just thought, I, you know, I had done a lot of work up to that, and again, I'm a trained dancer, and I, it just didn't sit well, and I said, can you tell me what the film is, or was, and they said, we can't say anything, uh, it, it, we've been sworn to secrecy to keep it quiet, but the director, Richard Markham, would like to meet you at Twickenham Studios, so 
um, my inner voice said to me, I wasn't going to go, and then my inner voice said, actually, go along and see what it's all about. So I went along, um, met the director, talked to him, he went through my CV, and then, he, and then he said, do you have your swim costume on? And I looked at him and I went, is this for real? Um, he said, I'm really sorry, I'm really embarrassed to ask you, but would you just walk up and just see how you move? And I went, okay, here we go. So I just walked up and down, and he said, oh yeah, you can move, and he said, we would like to invite you back for a second audition because you are a trained dancer. And I, and I just said, okay, well, I wasn't expecting to be, be um, called back. So from that, I was called back f um, to do the second audition. And it was still a secret. And it's still a secret. You know, I, there were about 15 of us. Um, and back in those days, there weren't that many trained black female dancers. And we knew it. I knew everybody. And I had my rivalry there. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, I'm not going to get it because she's pretty good. But anyway, we, we did a two-hour grueling um, audition with uh, Anthony Van Last, who is a very well-known uh, choreographer. Um, and at the end of it, well, we still didn't know. And I, I was in my bag getting my stuff together because I had to go back up to London to do the show. And um, one of the girls said, hey, what's this, you know, what's this film about? <laughs> and I didn't hear the answer. All I heard was this massive hush from all the girls. And I said, what's going on? And they said, it's the next Star Wars movie. So we just went, oh, my goodness. Uh, and I just, you know, you just go back in your brain to see what you did and did you perform well. And I, we had no idea what it was. So we just did the best we could with the choreography. Um, and then the, di the, gu the guy who was choreographing, he was going back to London. He asked me to take, take him back up there because he was doing something. And I said, yeah, I, I'll give you a lift. Um, and then he just kept on looking over to me. Uh, and I said, what's the problem? He said, look, I can't say anything. but I, you, 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 might have the, you might have the role. And I said, by the time I got back to the stage door when I was doing Cats, I got a message from my agent. And they said, um, I called her up and she said, they would love to have you for the next Star Wars movie. So from my, um, my initial reaction, thinking this is quite offensive because I didn't know what it was, and then my gut feeling took me to the audition to see the director to getting it. I'm, I'm glad I listened to my inner voice. So that was the story how I got Star Wars. Yeah, and personally, how were you feeling when, really, after the second edition, you heard it's Star Wars? Was it something in your interior who was saying, oh, my God, or, wow, let's do it? <laughs> I think it was both. I think back, you know, for, for, for us actors, singers, dancers, you know, we're, we're as good as our last job. And, and you know, you can go... You can go a long time without working, or you can go, it can, and it can lap. And fortunately, a lot of work I've done, it's lapped. So it was like, oh, it's the next job. Great, I can pay my mortgage. Great, yeah. it's, a, um, it's Star Wars, which is a privilege to be in. Um, so that was, uh, that was sort of my attitude. And I, you know, the work I've done at Source, as long as I go in, step and do a job, and come out again. But I knew it was some, it, the phenomena around the whole Star Wars was there, and I was excited about being part of the... the, the, the One of the chosen. <laughs> One of the chosen, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and in 1997, mm -hmm. they wanted for the special edition of the Star Wars mm -hmm. yes. something back, and... <laughs> They wanted to, so to say, redo yeah. the whole yeah. uh, scene yeah. with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And so w how was the feeling when you came back to that stage after such a long time? Mm. Uh, mm. Did you feel again? Oh, okay, I'm back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I mean, there's a, again, there's a, a brief story there, and it was I think it was 1994, and um, I, I I was in New York at the time, and I was visiting a really good friend of mine, and and I had didn't tell anybody. Again, to this day, I have no idea how they contacted me, and I was out one afternoon, and I, I had a phone call message saying that George Lucas. 
uh, the casting director was um, trying to find me to see if I would be interested in going back to revamp my scene because the, the Jabba's Palace was the one that George Lucas wanted to revamp. So um, I called them back and the first thing they said, they said that everyone sort of had a bet that they wouldn't find me because it, it took her about three months to find me. And then they said that if you had found her, she would have changed and we'll have to CGI her. And then she finally found me and then she said, look, we, we would love to invite you back to do Jedi, but you've got to fit in your rigid, original costume. And this is 14 years when I did it when I was 21 and then you know, being 35. And so um, th I just took some snapshots and sent it back. And they said, oh, no, no, you haven't changed. So it's okay. You can you can fly out and and we'll 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 um, add more footage to your scene. So again, you know, I was sort of, I mean, I was, I was excited, but I just thought, oh yeah, 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 it's another job, great, brilliant. So I'm like, stepping back into Ula, um, and it was so weird because when I did put on my original costume, my shoes, my leku, the, everything smelt the same. You know, it just it, it seemed that I hadn't sort of. Um, uh, it, it seemed like yesterday, so it was it was it was lovely to be to be asked back. Yeah, yeah. so it was not a different Ula who appeared so many years later. Yeah, yeah. So it was the same Ula. It was the same Ula. Yeah, yeah. And they they merged also some uh, scenes in that uh, special edition between eighty three and ninety seven. So how was it when you saw yourself <laughs> back uh, in those different areas? Did you recognize? Well, uh, actually, uh, I, it's a couple of times I thought, is that, uh, wait a minute, is that 82 or is that 97? And I, oh yeah, I saw something on me, I, that's 97. But um, it was, it, it, you know, it, it's quite extraordinary to be, Asked back and 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 merge the scenes together because um, he really wanted to revamp. And I I personally think the original was better. I think the song was better. I think the whole scene was better. And luckily there was enough enough footage to sort of have that authenticity. Um, and also you know I wasn't. They weren't going to see my death scene. I mean I was. I got there and all they wanted me to do was struggle on the leash for in front of the the, the green screen. I thought, okay, I've come all this way and <laughs> doesn't make. Anyway, uh, so and then Rick McCullum, who's the second director, he turned around to George and said, well, I, I think it might be a good idea to see Femi come into the pit and then face her demise. So they asked me if I want to stay for an extra four days, and I said, absolutely, it's not a problem. And that's where you see me meet. Well, you see me see my my uh, the rancor. And but but I felt it was like finality. I thought it yeah. was you know it was sort of like completion to the scene, to my, to what was going on with my character. And you were the only one from the original cast uh, in in that special edition. Didn't you miss your old cast? Well, you know, I was really. I was really fortunate to be on that soundstage originally, to be with all the actors. I had everybody. I had Carrie Fisher, I had Mark Hamill, I had Billy Dee Williams, Boba for everybody. And then plus all the creatures and Jabba's Palace, yeah. the late Claire Davenport. And it was, at first it was quite intimidating because, you know, I had to do the solo on my own and I had to just get my sort of headspace together and say, okay, be professional and just get up there and dance. But I had everybody there and it was like um, a very... Um, the, f the atmosphere was great. There were no egos on stage whatsoever. Um, so I was fortunate to have that for a week because we shot it for a week. Uh, but when I got back, I, I felt a little bit disconnected with the people because it, there wasn't that sort of camaraderie that we had with, with, um, with the original cast. Um, so yeah I, yeah, I just felt a little bit, you know, it was sort of discombobulated. It was, it, but I was, I, I, it was great that I was asked back. So I'm not here to, you know, complain about it. It was wonderful. But to um, compare it, it was just really special to be with the original cast or original actors. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, it, yeah. it it was completely different. Completely uh, different. And they didn't have green screen back then. You know, everything was done. It was they were all very forward think thinking. In yeah, the it, it was no more the practical no. effects. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. very modern. Very modern, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Ula yeah. was still 
the real. Yeah, it was all, yeah, it, yes, the real thing. The real, the real thing, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think uh, that the gods and everyone, yes, they I are know. sweating, sweating a lot. Yeah, and let you go. Uh, and <laughs> we let you go. And uh, thank you very much thank uh, you, thank you, for thank your you. great appearance. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> At a certain point, there was even a figurine coming out of... Ola. Yeah. When you saw it the very first time, so you saw yourself as a figurine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what, what was your yeah. reaction? Well, I, you know, I, I waited 17 years for a start. Um, I waited 17 years, and when my first reaction when I saw it, I went, I can't believe it. I'm sharing my box with Slacious Crumb. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very, very annoying on set. Very annoying on set. You know, when I was waiting to to shoot the scene, and he was like, nee, nee, nee. Was so annoying. So of all things, it must have been my karma thinking, you're so annoying that he came into my box. But <laughs> seeing myself being immortalized, I just think it, it, it is, it's a wonderful feeling to know that, you know, your character yeah. has... It, it, you know, it, it it's has its worth that it, they are going to immortalize her. So it was great. Well, yeah. I, I got over Slater's crumb. I, I appreciated it. Yeah, because <laughs> so you stay immortal. Yeah, I stay immortal, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's great that you yeah. stay immortal. Yeah, forever <laughs> and ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, Femi, mm. for this nice yeah. conversation. Thank you. We yeah. already had a small conversation yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and was it, good. Was it was good. as excellent uh, <laughs> as this one. Okay. And now, of course, it's Femi is yours. <laughs> um, so, hello, Ms. Taylor. Um, I was uh, wondering, uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is about... Um, uh, the director, Richard Martkins, yeah. who unfortunately mm -hmm. passed away 25 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. Mm. Um, I was wondering about the difference in directing styles in working with the actors between Mr. Markins and uh, Mr. Lucas, respectively, Mr. McCallum? M uh, um, Rick McCallum. Rick McCallum, mm. yes. Mm. And... So uh, answer that question first. Yes, please go for it. Because my age, I forget things. So <laughs> 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 let's start with that question yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, I said that. I'm allowed. I said that. Um, so Richard Markham, now I, there's a story there with Richard Markham, and um, I can tell you that as well because it's quite interesting. Um, but before I tell you that, um, Richard, uh, I felt that he was a very thorough director um, because of his background, and that will ex be explained when I tell you the story. Um, um, George Lucas, wonderful as he is, um, I, he, I think he was more into the CGI. And he, I felt that he, he um, because he's so shy, I thought that he didn't, he, interacting with the actors, he, I think he found quite challenging. Um, whereas with Richard, he didn't. He was very much there, present, um, uh, very, what's the word, amicable. You know, you felt very comfortable with him. Uh, Rip McCullum, I didn't really have that much to do with him. I mean, he, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I didn't even know he was around until he suggested to George Lucas, let's build this set for him to come down to the ankle pit. Um, but he had worked with my brother, Benedict Taylor, who, who is a very well-known actor he, in the 80s, and he did a little bit, bit in Star Wars. And I think that's when he said, actually, you know, there's a connection. I work with Benedict. Let's let's build, give a little bit more to, to Femi. Let's build the, the, the set and do it. So um, that was good. But Richard was... Wonderful, but the story there. Uh, am I talking too fast? Am I okay? You can okay, cool. Um, the story there is that when I went for the audition, um, I just said, I looked at Richard Mark and I thought, Oh, I'm, God, I know that face from somewhere. I don't. And when I did, you know, when I did the two hour grueling dance routine, I, went, oh, I know this face anyway. My dad, um, my dad worked for the BBC and he was a, uh, a director for the World About Us documentary series 
and he worked with them for 25 years. And when I got back from um, hearing that I, I, I got the part in Star Wars when I was up at the stage door doing Cats, I got back and Dad was saying, I remember that he was in the sitting room, he's standing there going, oh, well, for me, who, who's the director on the film? I went, oh, I don't know, this guy called Richard Marquin. Richard Marquis, oh, I, I can't remember being really fickle and I should have known. And he said, Femi, Richard Marquand. I said, yeah, 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 that's the name. That's the name, that's that, that, that's the name. And he said, oh, yeah, 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 we know Richard Marquand. Yeah, yeah, we, we used to go for Sunday lunches when you were only six, seven, year, seven years old. I'm like, that's why I've seen your face. So, <laughs> 22. So, and I, then I thought, that's, and he said, that's extraordinary. And he said, you're in good hands. So when I went for um, my costume fitting, not that there was much costume to wear, but when I went to my costume fitting, um, I thought I I asked him if I could speak to Richard. So I I called him up on the on the old fashioned telephones back in those days, and um and I he said oh you know first of all he apologised for my costume. He said I'm so sorry because it's not that much you're wearing. I said I think it really works. And then um and then I said Richard I've got something to say to you. Um you know who I am. He said do I? And I said you know who I am. He said, well, I, you look very familiar. And I said, I'm Richard Taylor's daughter. And he went, ah, oh. I was looking at you thinking, I know you from somewhere. So it was really nice to get the, get the part without him knowing who I was, vice versa, there was no nepotism in it at all. Um, so that sort of added, I felt more comfortable, but I, because he came from that background of documentaries and he was a solid director, uh, I think that really played a good part. So that's the story. Uh, yeah. yeah, my uh, second question oh, actually no. leads into the first one, but it was uh, whether or not you actually kind of answered it, uh, whether or not there was any kind of solidarity between the, the British cast and the American, or like yeah. some kind, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's yeah. no riv rivalry no. on the set. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I often, luckily the, the work I've done, everyone goes in and, and uh, we do the job as much as we can, and time is money, and y you know exactly what you're doing, and... Uh, I mean, th th there was a really nice warmth from all the actors, um, but we're all there to do a job, and they're all there to get something done. So that's what the atmosphere on the set was like. Um, whereas when I did the special edition <coughs> at there, uh, it wasn't the same in terms of the... Uh, there, you know, there were quite a few complaints from the new ones who hadn't been in the profession for very long in terms of waiting around and... Da -da. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking there <laughs> before I get myself into trouble. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Madame Taylor. Oh, thank Th you. Thanks for, for coming. Yep. And I would like to know which is your favorite um, Star Wars movie and why, uh, <laughs> besides Jedi, of course. I think my favorite one is Empire Strikes Back. I love Empire Strikes Back, and I love Yoda because he gives so many wonderful, positive messages during that, I mean, because he's you know, the Master Jedi, his wisdom, um, and I think you can um, cross-pollinate that with, people can understand, put that into their lives, their daily lives, and I think, yeah, I mean, I love Empire. I love Empire Strikes Back. Thank you. Um, well, you, you, you said that Yoda is one of your favorite characters, mm. and what do you think of Yoda from the prequels and in The Last Jedi? Did you like it? Be I, I love the in The Last Jedi, but I don't like it, Yoda in the prequels. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, and you're going to ask me, because I'm... Uh, okay, I'm going to be completely honest here. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was just saying, I was just saying yesterday, I'm going to ask me, I was about prequels, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I, for me, okay, for me, doing Jedi, Return, I, 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 I loved it, and it was a job, and then you step out of it. But I don't follow Star Wars. It does that make sense? And when I get questions about any of the other, except for the three, um, oops, um, it's I, I come to sort of, oh, well, I haven't really, I've seen them, but I haven't seen them, and I don't really take notice. So, but I love Yoda. So when I some yes, if that makes sense. That's fine. Oh, <laughs> I'll go and see the rest of all Star Wars. I will go and do a binge. <laughs> Um, hello. So hello. Um, I'm yeah, glad to to see, meet you today. <laughs> but you. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, my question uh, would be: um, uh, you, you said that you didn't really 
uh, follow the Star Wars movies that came after you mm -hmm. saw them maybe once or twice. But uh, what was your first experience uh, with Star Wars before you were cast in Return of the Jedi? Do you remember uh, yeah. which movie you, when when you saw the first? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I went to see it because there was a sort of phenomenon about there was everyone wanted to go and see Star Wars. So my parents took us to see Star Wars and I just remember the f and you know it was it, I, I liked it I liked it um and when I saw Empire I loved it uh and then when I realized I was going to be in Return of the Jedi I thought how wonderful what a great opportunity um but you know I was what unfortunately I had a drunk man sitting next to me and kept on going like this all the time uh, so that's what the say the, the the first Star Wars movie, but the best thing is when I do the conventions. I meet all the actors who have been in many of the films, um, and that's really that that's really nice to sort of have that experience and be appreciate what you know what what we've done and what I've been in. How much time did you spend in makeup? Um, I well, I had to be I had to be in the studio by four o'clock in the morning. Um, and we tested it, and it took, first of all, actually, it took five hours, and then it got it down to four hours, um, because they, back in those days, they had these little makeup pots, um, and they had a little sponge, and I'm so dark, <laughs> and they had to put about three or four layers on, so, you know, they put it on, buff it up, put it on, buff it up, and, yeah, I had to be ready to be on set by seven, whether they wanted to use me by seven o'clock, but it took about four hours to put that makeup on, and it took about 13 showers to get it all off. Every day. <laughs> every day, every day. And then what happened, you know, because I was seeing cats at the time, I, I was taking the green paint makeup off, and then uh, I was putting cat makeup on, and I thought, this is too much. I, I'm going to actually take a holiday from cats and just do Jedi. But, um, yeah, but, I, you know, it worked. It, I think it was it, the colour green and what they did, it, re it really is conducive to, to the character. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Go on, Alessandro. Will you play another time, uh, not Ola, but another twi uh, Twi'lek? Or you say, no, I play twice, it's enough? Or? I wouldn't, you know, because I'm, I'm sort of like the pioneeress of playing. I'm the one who starts it off. So I think that's special in itself. Um, Maybe in another series of uh, Disney? Or Maybe. I mean, nev you never say no. You never say no. I sitting here thinking, oh well, I was Ula, I was the first Twi'lek, Twi'lek. But um, you never say no. It depends what they're offering, what the you know, how much they're paying. <laughs> but no, no, I, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Speaking about the Twi'lek, mm -hmm. uh, how long did it take, and how were the tentacles on the head made? Oh, the, the lekus, yeah. Well, the, that was um, because when I when I first uh, learned the dance routine, it, it was a week of week of choreography, and I didn't have any of the props. You know, I pretended there was a leash there. Um, they they sort of knew I was going to wear something on my head, but when I got on set and got into costume, it's like a helmet and you put it on, and they were so heavy. And so uh, my dance routine, it's like there were a lot of different terms, jumps, spins, and then I got whacked in the face quite a few times, and then you have to alter it. Um, but I think that it's very clever design, very clever design to have these sort of elephant trunk tentacles coming out of your head. Um, but they're all made of foam, um, and I think they've really, th because it, it's very much Twilight, so there's a whole universe of Twilight now. They, they've been able to um, really master the material, and they're very light now. But back in 82, they're very heavy, very, very heavy. More. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was uh, wondering, um, like, uh, about the attention into the role of uh, Aurora, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, in uh, 82, when you uh, did uh, the when you were cast for the role, you probably didn't think that you were would still be talking about this role uh, in 2022 in at the convention I in know, Luxembourg. I know, no, so who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I was wondering if uh, this attention was there uh, all the time from the uh, 83 onwards, or was there a change fr uh, after a special edition? Yeah, uh, okay, so 
82, there, I mean, there was, uh, there was a tension around the character, but not that much. When it really started to take off is when I did the special edition and when there was this whole thing about I had been asked to come back and it was quite hard to believe. And then when I buy, it was fortuitous that I, um, I, I stumbled on the convention scene because I didn't know that was happening. And um, I was gonna do a film and it got, uh, it didn't happen. And the director said, do you know anything about the convention scene? And I said, no, I don't. They said, there's a whole universe that happens. Um, and that's when I, I realized, and the, you know, the fans and, and, and it, it, it Ula became iconic status. So, but that's really from it's from the, steps, the special edition and from the convention scene. But before that, yes, but not so much. And I think that's when they decided to do immortalize me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the moment. So we'll put, we'll, we'll put her into plastic. But it's been wonderful to. Um, it's been wonderful to merge the you know, doing events and meeting yourselves. It, I mean, who would have? I mean, it's just been great to travel to places I wouldn't have traveled. Um, and also, I, I love the fact that when you do come to like conventions, there's no fights, everybody gets on with each other. There's a really wonderful atmosphere, and I've been to quite a few, but it's just everyone's a collective consciousness that everyone's there for just having permission to be themselves and to enjoy their passion. Um, and honestly, I've met so many, so many wonderful people. So I'm really, I have so much gratitude. And I'm saying thank you to you all, you know, because without you, I wouldn't be sitting here. So, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>